Hey everyone, welcome back. This is just a quick follow-up to the previous tutorial because I had some technical difficulties there at the end. Um, after I restarted my server, everything seems to be allowing me to connect again. So let's go ahead and finish up our connection between our Glassfish server and our MySQL database. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead back to your terminal and let's go ahead and log into MySQL. And now we also, if you just hit up a few times, you should get back to this grant all privileges command that we had run previously. So what you want to do is grant all privileges on all databases and all tables to whatever your username was. In this case, mine was glassfish admin. And then rather than local host here, what you want to do is put this percent symbol. And what this does is allow you to connect from any IP address outside of this actual server so you're not going to be working from the local host you'll be able to connect remotely to this database and then identify it again by your password and since you're going to be opening this up to remote connections you want to make sure you use a much more secure password than this obviously so go ahead and execute that command and then you can just exit out and now we need to change one more setting inside the MySQL configuration file. So if you go to cd etsy MySQL and you should see this my.cnf so you want to do sudo nano mycnf and now just scroll down here and you can take note that port 3306 is the default. You can change that if you want but at least for following this tutorial I would recommend just keeping it the same for now. But what you're interested in is going down to find this line here. It should say bind address 127.0.0.1. And this was like this by default. So what I did is I commented it out. And then I made a new line under it. And I just typed out bind address. And in this case, we're going to set 0.0.0.0. .0 so once you do that, just go ahead and type uh, control X. And then you can save it. And now we can go back to our admin panel. You can go down to resources, JDBC, connection pools, new. And here you can name this whatever you want. So I'll do MySQL connection pool. Again, the resource type is javax.sql.datasource. The vendor is going to be MySQL. And that's all you need to do. Now hit next and go to the step two page. You can leave these as default. What we're interested in is down here. So you want to put your MySQL username. So for me, this was glassfish admin. We want to set our server name. This is going to be the IP address to that server. So again, mine was 192.168.1.1. Um, 27 and actually you know what no we can just put this as local host since it's running on the same machine as the glassfish server so that's fine local host and now there's two more things we have to fill in the port should be 3306 if you changed it you would have to change this here to reflect those changes so we have our user, um, there should be one called database name, there it is. So uh, in this case, the database we had created was called glassfish test. And if you don't have this, just go back into the command line, log in and create some database to work with initially. In my case, I made a database called glassfish underscore test so I put that in here and then this is going to be the password for this MySQL user account so this again was that weak password I had made and now we can scroll all the way to the bottom and select finish 
once this processes, it should bring us back to this page. So now we can go ahead and click on that and just select ping and hopefully you get ping succeeded. In that case, the next thing we can do is go back here to JDBC resources. And now here we want to select new. The JNDI name is going to be um, JDBC slash. And then let's put the name of that connection pool we made. So my SQL connection pool. We're going to be using my SQL connection pool. And just describe it. This will be our MySQL connection pool glassfish test connection. And go ahead and just select OK. And that is a weird. Thing. Let me go back here and just see what happened there. Um, select this. And I think it might have something to do with this name here. So let me go back. Let me just go ahead and erase this. So I'll select that and delete. OK. And give me one second. OK, so let's go ahead and go back here, select new again, and let's do JDBC slash MySQL connection pool. Again, we're going to be using MySQL. And this is just glassfish test connection. Go ahead and select OK. That time it worked. So that should hopefully be everything we need to do here. So now the next step is to download Eclipse. And if you go to the eclipse.org website, go to Downloads, and you want the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. And here I have Windows 64 bit, so I'm going to go ahead and download this. I already did this here. So I'll just launch this. And to start with, we need to extract it. So let me go ahead and put this on I'll just make a new folder right there and call this Java EE tutorial. OK and I'll extract it. All right, so this is actually going to take a while. So rather than do that, I already have a copy installed. So once you get all of that installed and go through the um, setup procedure, you should be able to launch into Eclipse. And the first thing that you want to do is go down here to this servers view. And if you don't see it by default, you can go to window I believe um, show view and then servers and this should bring up this right here. So I'll go ahead and just delete this since I already have it. This way I can show you. You want to go new server and just scroll down. If Glassfish isn't already installed there, what you can do is select this download additional server adapters. And if you scroll down, eventually you should be able to find the Glassfish adapter. So go ahead and do that. And once you come back to the screen, that should give you access to this Glassfish folder. What you want is Glassfish 3.1. Here for the server host name, this is going to be the IP address of the server that's hosting the Glassfish install that we did before. So in my case, again, that's 192.168.1.27. And that will append it to the end of this server name. You can change this if you want to whatever suits your needs. But I'll leave this, in my case, as the default. And then make sure this is set to Glassfish 3.1. Select Next. On this screen, you want to put in the admin name and password for controlling our Glassfish server. So 
defaults we had was admin and in my case I'll just put in my password your admin port should be set to 4848 which we set before the server port this is where you would actually access the applications that we deploy is going to be set to 8080 and now you just want to go ahead and ping the server to make sure that it works and then down here you should be able to access the next and finish button now go ahead to next and this screen we can just leave empty for now so select finish and down here what you'll see is this will take a second or two to pop up but it might say synchronizing and then eventually it should say started synchronized assuming that the server is up and running if it's not what you want to do is just go back here go to your home folder uh, my glassfish version 3 and then run the as admin start domain and it should boot up the server for you since mine's already running I'm not going to bother doing that and then from here you can go ahead and control different aspects of the server you can actually even bring the server up and down you can stop it and control some aspects of the server from directly inside of Eclipse here now the final thing that we need to do is connect our Eclipse here with the MySQL database so let's go ahead back and go to your command line one last time there was one thing we forgot to do we have to restart the instance of MySQL server so to do that type sudo space slash Etsy slash MySQL uh, I'm sorry actually erase that Etsy slash init dot D and then MySQL and now just type restart and that should take a second and then reboot it says what the process number is and at that point we should have remote access from here to the server so now we're gonna go ahead and go to this data source Explorer and again if you don't have that you can go to show view and you want data source Explorer if you don't see it there you can go to other and data management data source Explorer that will bring up this here so in the database connections you can right click and select new in my case I already have one so I'll just start working with this one we can go to properties and under driver properties you want to select your driver should be MySQL JDBC driver and if that's not an option for you what you have to do is you can go to this triangle here and go to the jar list here and you want to download or point to this connector J MySQL connector dash Java 5.1.22 jar which you can download and access again this is pretty much the same one we downloaded earlier from this website here so you can come back here download this um, take the zip archive in this case put it on your Windows machine extract it inside of it should be a jar file that should say something like connector J uh, or MySQL connector dash Java blah 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 dot jar so in here you would have to go to add jar and point to wherever you extracted that to once you have that select OK you should get no errors and at this point you want to then point to the database so in this case I made a database called glassfish test you want this URL to say JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash the IP address of the server that's hosting the MySQL instance in this case it's the same server as our glassfish so 192.168.1.27 colon 3306 this is the default port to remotely access the MySQL instance then follow it with a slash and again the name of the database so glassfish underscore test 
The username is going to be the username to access your MySQL database. The password is the password for that. In my case, it was that unsecure password. Um, and then you can save that. And now just go ahead and test connection. And if everything worked out, you should have ping suc uh, successful or succeeded. So select OK and now OK. And now we can go ahead and connect to that here. And here you can see new MySQL is connected. So we can see this database right here. And another thing we can do is now go up to Window, Open Perspective, go to Other, and now go to Database Development and select OK. And we should have access to all these databases. Now here's the Derby database that's built in. It comes as part of this Eclipse EE package. And here we have our new MySQL and the Glassfish test, which is the schema or the database that we're going to be interacting with. So here you can start to bring up the different um, tables and views and control different aspects of your database directly from here. So if you wanted to make sure it's still working, you can ping it. Um, we can check the tables. At this point, we don't have any tables installed. So we may not necessarily start interacting with this immediately, but it helps to know that we already have a connection to our database and everything's in line. So once we start to actually develop in Eclipse, we know that we have a database to store persistent data. So that does it for the intro tutorial, and I actually planned on doing this all in one, but I had to split it up because I had those initial problems. But hopefully you were able to follow along with all of this, and in subsequent tutorials we'll start getting into actually developing Java Enterprise applications and deploying those directly onto our GlassFish server. So thanks for watching, and check out the next few tutorials when they come up.